Hello. So today we not so much deep dive, it's actually going to be more like a high level architecture, and then we're going to have the separate deep dive sections probably okay. later on the different areas because it's kind of like hard to go deep in the one uh, hour. That, that makes that sense. Why... Okay, sure. So today the, we're going to talk first the, on the start about the background and usages that the Avalon covering because that is the important so we would be on the same page. And then we're really going to talk about the architecture and the um, plans that what we're going to do with the current architecture, how we're going to advance that and achieve the, our goals. And the um, plans in particular interesting to hear maybe if we have time a little bit left maybe folks may talk about the, what they plan to do that would be interesting to follow up to the discussion so first of all uh, just to be on the same page the idea of the um avalon is actually to achieve the scalability and privacy by offloading the um, execution of chain so the um if we take the traditional blockchain for the execution the um nodes that uh, process the data they actually obtain the old data and the data processed on chain and that is all the great and the but um it's everything is transparent and everything has to be replicated on uh, every node and obviously that is has some limitation for um enterprises then um, what we're trying to do we're trying to utilize some kind of trusted compute options and Avalon currently supports the um, SGX trusted execution environment that uh, runs off chain in the for example enterprise facility or in the cloud service so in this case we it shows that these enterprise a has a trusted execution environment that process the data. So in this case, whenever the enterprises want to communicate, they exchange data in encrypted format and the data being processed the, uh, on the server at the enterprise A, but they protect it in the, uh, processed in the way that they cannot be, um, uh, cannot be seen by enterprise A either. And even though this in the uh, blockchain keeps just the receipts of that, uh, of the process data, effectively the cryptographic proofs. So in this case, the uh, diagram shows that trusted computer runs on enterprise A side, but it actually can run on either enterprise A or enterprise B sides. So I think we last time a little bit briefly touched on the possible use cases for the um, Avalon that we're trying to address, and I'm going to go through two of them. One of them focused more on the uh, scalability, and that is the currently shown here for the IT usages. We have the warehouse. Warehouse has to report its humidity and uh, temperature uh, data. And if on the left hand side, if it does that in the without the trusted execution environment, it can report uh, all the data to the blockchain. Obviously, there is a good chance that the uh, blockchain is going to be overloaded with the amount of data being sent to the uh, blockchain. So one of the ways to handle that is to have a trusted execution environment in warehouse that will collect this data and it will say periodic and in potentially infrequent updates to the blockchain. But these data being processed in the trusted compute uh, environment, they still can possess the same um, trust level capabilities or similar to the blockchain. So we can establish the uh, trust uh, across the uh, whole IoT solution. The another top type of usages that we're trying to address, they are related to confidentiality. So let's look at the, uh, for example, uh, situation when the business trying to create a, a request a medical insurance. <coughs> and um, in this case, uh, business need, uh, has a health, uh, health in place and they want to have a discount. So this uh, allow the insurance company to get access to the um, uh, employees medical records and they provide this access through the blockchain so it's known to the insurance company they make step two they make a 
request uh, request for a quote uh, and put these in the quote queue also on the blockchain. The insurance company gets the quote request and it um, wants to make, calculate what the risk of providing insurance to this uh, employee pool. So it will going to uh, calculate the uh, risk, for example, of the heart disease. For that, it's going to submit the uh, request. Uh, the going to, to do processing in the, its own trusted execution environment, and it's going to submit request to the one or more trusted execution environment at the hospitals. So hospitals don't have to share that data even in the encrypted format. Hospitals at step five uh, verify that the uh, access to the medical data of this particular uh, subset of the um, patients was indeed granted granted by the business. So they're going to do process the um, risk for the uh, subset of the employees that is actually um, available in this uh, hospital. And the intermediate results going to be returned to the insurance company. And insurance company we're going to process the all results also in the trusted execution environment and return the final uh, number, the risk, to the insurance company. And at step six, it will provide the quote and business gets the uh, results in the step seven. The key here that uh, the information about the, um, the whole information process in trusted execution environments. Hospitals going to use trusted execution environment to protect the um, algorithms that are actually going to be provided by insurance company. That is IP that insurance company wants to protect. The insurance company going to use in this case trusted execution environment to make sure that intermediate results they provided by the hospitals won't be um, uh, cannot be used to infer information about the particular employees. For example, if the hospital has a very small number of employees only. So this is two um, kind of like use cases that should give the general understanding of what is Avalon trying to address. Um, so moving to the uh, architecture now any questions on the background and the on the uh, use cases i went pretty quickly through them because i think we talked about that i just wanted to make sure that everybody on the call is actually has the same uh understanding of what we're trying to address hey eugene it's mick mm -hmm. hey um just again just to sort of clarify the on-chain off-chain thing that really avalon is about performing confidential computations off-chain. And for the moment, that has no effect on the state of the chain. Is that correct? Or what's what's the um, kind of objective there? So the state of the chain, we do assume that it's going to be, for example, smart contracts or chain code that we interact to submit. And I will talk the, a little bit later about that. But so we do assume the several smart contracts, for example, running on blockchain or several chain codes that has actually handled the registration uh, of the... Um, but right. So it's really the registration and the other parts of it rather than the actual state that's being executed or that's being modified by an Avalon. So the Avalon currently stateless and we're working in the EEA Trusted Compute Workgroup on adding the state. And okay. actually this is later we're going to end the state. So currently it's stateless. That's correct. Okay. So currently it's stateless, but there is a plan to, to incorporate some notion of state later on. That's right. Okay. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, no, Evgeny Przemek here. Uh, I just wanted yeah, sure. to do a little bit answer. Uh, it's a learning process. So this technology is kind of difficult to, to start playing with. And of course, the, the ultimate goal is to standardize the interaction between trusted data and trusted computing. Uh, but uh, the learning point here at the moment is that we are using smart contracts as a registry and for discovery and for commitment of the data that is to be processed. But this is only a stepping stone. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Pshimak. Okay, any other questions? Okay, 
Well, let's look at the architecture. So the, as I said, today we're going to look at the pretty much high level, the architecture of the um, Avalon. And I think, um, and it's evolving, it's not the um, completed. So we kind of in intermediate state, we have the uh, little bit limited implementation at the moment that is evolving, like Shemek said, both in the definition and the implementation. So the uh, later on, we're going to have several sections talking about the different components and how the, we do plan to address them. So while talking about the architecture, I will talk a little bit about the um, both current and the planned architecture. Uh, but the it's pretty much at high level, so um, it's probably should not be that uh, critical. But I will point out if the um, what we have implemented and what we have not implemented. <coughs> so the fundamentally the there are three major components involved in the um, Avalon. So. One of them is a requester application. And requester application, it can be a front-end UI, or it can be some form of script, or it can be enterprise application. And in some cases, even though it's shown it's outside of the blockchain, it may actually include custom um, smart contracts or chain code that is actually going to run on blockchain. The important part that uh, we trying to isolate the application developers as much as possible from the intricate details of Avalon. So the idea that um, application would utilize the Avalon provided connector library to make the interaction with the um, um, uh, blockchain contract, Avalon specific blockchain contracts and with the uh, trusted compute service um, as transparent and easy to use as possible. On the blockchain, the requester uh, app is actually has two ways to communicate to trusted compute service. And trusted compute service is the primary component that of the architecture, and I'll talk about that a bit later. So there are two ways to do that. So one of them is through the blockchain. The And blockchain includes Three smart, well, technically it includes four smart contracts, but I combine two of them into one. So the there is a worker registry contract. There is also the contract that actually lists potentially multiple worker registries. If it's not, even though this is not requirement, a general assumption that going to be one uh, worker registry contract per the trusted compute service. So the worker registry contract can represent one trusted compute service, even though it's possible to combine the multiple trusted compute service in the same worker registry, but it's probably more easier from maintenance perspective to not do that. Work order queue is used to submit the tasks uh, from the um, request application to the trusted compute service. And the work order receipt contracts is maintain information about the um, proof that uh, work, uh, the uh, tasks or in our terminology work orders were completed. And as I mentioned, there are two ways to do that. So in one, um, one way is actually through the blockchain, but there is another way. In a uh, request application can actually communicate to the trusted compute service directly through the more traditional JSON RPC uh, listener. And that is done to address the uh, scalability usages, uh, the ones that I described in the IoT use case. And in case of blockchain, it's shown that blockchain kind of retrieves the uh, data from the blockchain, but in reality, it can rely on the um, uh, notification or alert mechanism and be notified by the blockchain and uh, instead of the pulling link for the uh, request from the blockchain. <coughs> On the um, trusted compute service, we really the, have the uh, just few components, even though they may be complex by itself, but fundamentally there are these connectors, the blockchain connector and the RPC connector that we um, have in. And then there is um, the worker registry and work order queue manager. So there's going to be a couple databases. One of them going to maintain information about the available workers and another going to maintain information about the work orders, work order queue. And we're going to have a queue manager that is 
going to handle these uh, queues. The current implementation of the SQL Manager, pretty basic, it just puts the uh, inappropriate tables and the implementation uses the LMDB or Lightning DB uh, for its processes and it puts just the um, uh, data in these uh, databases and uh, process them. Uh, kind of maintains. Once we're going to have the uh, state management, we're going to ha have to deal with more complex algorithms, and we will have to add ability to deal with dependencies. Uh, and that is actually, the, I mean, to your question, that is our plans, and they, we will going to have to implement some of them on chain and some of them off chain here to achieve the uh, state management. So another, the bigger part is the um, workers themselves. So currently, as I mentioned, we uh, implemented the uh, Intel SGX Trusted Execution Environment uh, Worker, but the architecture is actually open to different type of workers. And the, I listed just a few possible examples here. So Trusted Trust Zone, the uh, TE is one of the uh, candidates to be edited uh, soon and the other options and the um, zero knowledge proof and the MPC that is actually already listed in the um, E specification that we in general follow and extending that also to other blockchains. So in <clears throat> the important part is the orchestration that allows to um, handle the multiple workers in efficient manner and the um, I would say following the elastic compute model, so you can um, dynamically increase and decrease number of uh, <coughs> workers. The another important part is actually dealing the, with multiple enclaves uh, or trusted execution environments that would represent the same worker to the um, uh, requester. So really talking about the worker pools and the. Uh, Current implementation, I just, as I said, I want to mention that current implementation is pretty limited. We have the single worker only, and that is the, the biggest part for us to extend that. So the having single worker allows us to do the, uh, pretty much it's kind of like skeleton of the implementation, but the very important part to make sure that we add these uh, worker pool support and we use as an orchestration. We don't plan to build our own orchestration engine. Instead of that, we're going to utilize existing uh, integrate uh, the orchestration engines and the plan is actually to start by integrating Kubernetes. <coughs> Work order when the, um, uh, the another important part that we need to focus on the current worker is actually handles the key management and um, it's um, going to, um, and it also does the processing of the work orders, which is okay for the uh, trusted um, for the trusted execution environments and the point clays with the minimally sized TCB. But our plans include also including the um, uh, frame include frameworks that actually allow us to use the pretty large applications. The examples would be like Baidu T or the Graphene, and there are a number of other commercial and the um, <clears throat> public, uh, publicly available environments, uh, development environments, and those increase the chances of the potential uh, user errors and application errors. So another important area is to maintain the uh, key management uh, separately from the uh, processing of work orders. This also has not been implemented, but um, this is another important area for us to work uh, on. And the one more area, the, uh, there are some situations when the utilizing trusted enclave and um, working on the um, components uh, inside of the, the uh, utilizing kind of like the whole execution inside of trusted enclave possible, for example, to um, process some kind of algorithm. But in many cases, it does require access to the external data, simply because the input data or output data may be too large to fit into the uh, work order request itself to be embedded. So for this purpose, we have what we call inside out API that allows access to the external data source. And that inside the out API, we provide the general framework that allows to make the um, call out 
but the actual detailed specifics going to provide it by application and those specifics can include the uh, <clears throat> For example, the file system, or they may include database, or may include the access to external web service. So this is really going to be application specific. And finally, how are we going to? Sure, go ahead. How are we going to trust this external data source in in, in through this framework? So the um, trust the if the external source is really the going to be application specific because the uh, Avalon obviously doesn't know what data has to be processed so that is going to be uh, um, the workload the orange part is going to uh, know the uh, what data to try what uh, sources to trust the avalon will provide the uh, framework that will make that easier to validate and access the data but decision about to trust or not trust going to be done by the application specific workload Okay, um, a few words the, when I mentioned on the workloads, there are different tar types of workloads. So there are workloads that are going to be known, uh, fully known at the compile time, and they're going to be built in, in the uh, <clears throat> in class, and those going to be those that actually not not at compile time. The, for example, scripts and the um, or enclave or the trusted execution environment is going to have the interpreter for the scripts for example python scripts and the but the actual workload is going to be python written in python they can be provided dynamically at runtime obviously that will require the uh, some form of mechanism uh, to trust to those or, um, python workloads so they can be potentially implemented white list or black lists or that can be done by the um, requester so requester will sign the um, um, full workloads or will provide the what kind of like the uh, set of scripts as actually can be executed and finally a little bit about the colors here so the blue colors represent what is going to be the um, Avalon framework and the orange colors they actually represent the application specific uh, code. So the idea to make sure that the Avalon provides the framework that the application developers don't have to deal, they have to provide their custom um, uh, uh, application specific code only on the client side and the requester application or in the code running within the trusted execution environment, the workload. And the, just it's not really the architecture, but to note that the, there is really the uh, already um, tutorial how to build the um, low world application, which is just shows the uh, how easy to create the uh, minimal uh, <coughs> workload for the Avalon, and that's available in the GitHub already. I'm not going to go through that today, but the, um, you're welcome to go and see that. In for yourself that actually the um, boilerplate plate code for the um, orange parts is actually pretty small and easy. Any questions on the general architecture slide and then I plan to go through the uh, workflow and the few details of the building the trust within the um, Avalon. How would you how would you describe smart contracts in blockchain? The top left corner. So smart contract. This is Ethereum smart contracts. In this case, um, I just couldn't come up with a generic term. So if it's developed in the um, uh, Ethereum, that would be the um, smart contract. In case of the um, fabric, it would be chain code. In case of Sotus, it would be transaction processor. Right, so um, my, my question was to understand, um, since we are using blockchain to maintain worker registry and then work order queue and then receipts, how would different organizations play a role in, in this? Oh, okay. So in general, what we expect that the we, uh, Avalon, will provide the um, four smart contracts. I, as I mentioned that I didn't list one of them here. 
and those smart contracts follows the uh, EEA of chain trusted compute specification. So the APIs define the specification. They define for the Ethereum, but they pretty easily can be ported to the um, uh, like fabric chain code, and that work is actually going on already. And the APIs for the, all these contracts is relatively simple. It's kind of like get put and look up APIs for all of them. They're going to have some uh, internal logic behind those APIs, uh, but that's going to be pretty straightforward. In terms of the applications, like you mentioned, what they're going to play, there are two ways how the application may use that. So one of them, they may just decide to modify their own smart contracts. For example, in case of work orders, they may want to use a different policy that we're going to use to maintain the old work orders, how many and how uh, quickly to discard the work orders, for example. And another one, the applications may have the extensions, um, additional contracts that are going to um, coordinate with the um, work order queues. For example, in case of attested oracles, there is a kind of popular um, API um, called um, Town Crier, and that API includes the uh, chain link, uh, the, uh, I think initially it was Town Crier, now it's called chain link, that includes a number of APIs. So these type of smart contracts can actually be combined with work order queue and maybe even with worker registry. And that is actually how the application, uh, the application developers can uh, use these smart contracts and extend and modify them. Another one is the work order receipts. This is kind of like very flexible. Um, I would say the placeholder um, definition in the specification now, and it's intentional because receipts may be relatively simple to make sure that um, uh, processor of the workload just submits cryptographic proof that yes, this work worker submitted a process this work with this hash value and that is the hash value of the result and that it's signed by the uh, worker or it can be complicated that will include the uh, some kind of orchestration mechanism among the multiple parties got it thank you okay any other questions Okay, so now the kind of like happy for all, flow of the uh, processing of, um, of the overall the Avalon processing. So there are several phases of the execution and they kind of like go one by one through that. So one of them, the enclave, exec, uh, the enclave registration. So in this case, and I'm going to talk in the context of the uh, Intel SGX. Uh, which is currently implemented in the other trusted compute options, the flow obviously would change slightly, the uh, enclave, uh, substantially during the enclave registration and potentially slightly during the enclave discovery, but the other parts should stay generally similar. So the uh, during this phase, the, um, the TCF, uh, well, sorry, I forget to change it, the project used to be called TCF, so I still uh, sometimes use the TCF instead of Avalon. So it's not TCF middleware, it's Avalon middleware, that uh, first it will create a worker, then the worker will generate the keys, and it generates its own quote and return it back to the, um, uh, to the uh, Avalon middleware. And then the Avalon will make the, um, uh, submits the verification report to the attestation framework for the producing the, uh, uh, the uh, verification, sorry, for producing the verification report. The current implementation uses Intel IAS, Intel Attestation Service, and the um, in the future we plan to add the support for the DCAP framework, which is likely to be more popular and more common in the uh, near future. So after that, once we have a verification report and we have a keys, public keys, they're going to be submitted to the blockchain that serves as an intermediary here. And the information about this worker recorded uh, on the blockchain. The 
TC, the Avalon middleware may create multiple uh, the enclaves in this case that are going to represent the um, pool of the workers. But the important part that the same record uh, on the blockchain are going to represent all these pools and the Avalon will have an ability to uh, <clears throat> distribute the work orders to any of the workers in the pool uh, kind of like following the policy which of the workers are available of that time so that is actually a very important feature for the scalability in the kind of like more traditional cloud um, service provider um, way how they tend to do their work the next step is the enclave discovery so in this case the uh, requester application is actually makes a call to the blockchain and it uh, looks for the appropriate workers so the idea is actually to find the worker that does the uh, right um, type of tasks that the requester needs once the worker is found the uh, uh, the library, the requester API, but in reality, this is the library provided by Avalon, is actually verifies and stores the enclave uh, attestation verification report and its keys. And I will have the next slide that will talk how the um, verification, what does it really entitle. But at the high level, uh, the verification report provided by the IS service is verified first, and then the, it checks that the keys is actually. Uh, match the uh, uh, um, <clears throat> create the kind of like trust chain then uh, there is the uh, work by the way is there any questions on these uh, enclave registration enclave discovery stages okay then going to the work order uh, invocation in this case the uh, requester application prepares a work order request and um and again i'm going to have additional slide to talk about the what is really involves in that in terms of the uh, security and the work order is submitted to the blockchain and the, as i mentioned before that another option to submit that directly through the json api to the tcs but in this case the diagram shows that it's submitted to the blockchain to work order request smart contract the um middleware gets the work order request in this case it shows that it's pulls for the work order request but the uh, notification mechanism can be used or in addition to that and then it uh, dispatches that to the uh, pool and the the during this dispatch one of the workers will pick up the work order and start to process it that involves these three uh, sub steps so one of them is actually process work order request that uh, the uh, will involve the decrypting the data, verifying the integrity of the request, then actual execution of the work order by the application workload, application specific workload that may optionally need to access external data. And when the result is returned to the, um, uh, to the, um, worker core or the kind of like avalon code avalon will prepare the um uh, uh, request and that request will include the uh, encrypting the data and the uh, signing the data and finally the uh, response will be submitted to blockchain and the eventually it will be retrieved by the requester from the blockchain and it will be processed and the work order will be processed that will also include the um, validating the integrity and decrypting the data and these uh, um, security specific steps i'm going to have the additional slide on that any questions on the overall processing flow okay then the few words about the chain of trust so in this case the we have these three important elements the that um ensure that uh, the trust between the requester and the worker so first of all it starts from the uh, uh, attestation verification report in, in, as i mentioned that we currently use the ias service to authorize the um, report and uh, we're going to work on the um, decap implementation and that uh, decap implementation going to be added in the future to the um, uh, to the avalon 
In either case, there is the attestation verification report, and the important part that it includes a field called uh, <clears throat> report data. So, in addition to the verification report, the enclave will create inside of trusted pod two key pairs. One of them for signing and verification of signatures, and another one for the um, encryption. Uh, and that is the, the signing key is the set P to 56 K1 uh, uh, key now, but the um, both implementation specification allowed to change the type of keys and the um, encryption key is an RSA key now, and the um, also can be by the spec technically changed, but implementation allows to use only one key at this time. So the um, <clears throat> the report data include the hash value of the verification public key, and in turn verification public key is used to uh, sign one or more encryption public keys. That is actually how the flow of the um, of the chain of trust is established to make sure that the requester can trust when submitted the um, request to the worker, uh, work order request to the worker, it can be sure that these requests can be um, uh, seen in clear only by the specific worker, and it can actually verify that the processing was done by the specific worker as well. Any questions on the chain of trust? Okay, so the um, few words about the work order confidentiality and integrity. The, um, there is a number of steps that has been done by Avalon to ensure uh, that uh, <clears throat> they, the, we preserve the confidentiality and integrity of the work order request and work order response. So the on the <coughs> A uh, requester is actually starts by generating one time symmetric key. That key is used to uh, the encrypt the data. It then the uh, hash value of the request is being uh, calculated, and the hash value of the request is also being the um, encrypted with the um, uh, with this um, key. Symmetric encryption key, and then a symmetric encryption key is encrypted with the um, in uh, in the enclave's public encryption key, and optionally uh, the request also so can be signed uh, by the um, requester, and we, as you can see, that one of the reasons why the signing is optional, even though in many cases it's probably going to be used, but we also have another integrity mechanism. The um, as uh, the encrypted hash value is to handle the anonymous the uh, re requests when the requester is not known. When this request arrives to the worker, worker uh, first decrypts the uh, symmetric encryption key. It decrypts the worker data. It uh, calculates the hash of request. It decrypts the hash value provided in the request if uh, the end compares that with the calculated values. It, its signature is provided, it also verifies the signature using the requester's key. And then it processes the work order, it encrypts the work order response data using the same key that was provided in the um, request. It calculates the hash value of the response and it signs the um, hash value with its signing key. So this is the steps that is actually performed during the work order uh, submission and work order um, re uh, result processing. Any questions on this flow? And by the way, it's um, also described in the um, specification but in specification i'm not sure that there is a flow described exactly in the same format but in in, in january it is there as well hey eugene uh jim here is what's the role of the hash um 
since it's it's only the the target worker is able to decrypt the payload, um, it's it should have pretty high confidence that the data has not been manipulated in transit. So what's the what's the role of the hash? Is that for later to send to the blockchain? So there are two uh, two values in the using this approach. So one of them, not all. Uh, data may be encrypted. So in some cases, the uh, data uh, may be sent in clear. Some requests actually, some work orders may require only integrity checks, not the data encryptions. They may be submitted in clear. And the second one is, uh, there is one complication that I didn't mention here, is that the data may be submitted by the uh, multiple um, parties and they may use their own keys and or in general even by the in case of the single uh, request there the there can be multiple parts of the data and because we have a multiple uh, parts of the data it is possible technically to establish man in the middle attack when you remove one of the data and you submit your own data instead and in this case um and if this data <clears throat> and these data is actually in our case each data item can be encrypted with each own key and if you submit your own part of the data with your own key you technically can um, uh, create a, the attack that would allow you to get some insights into the um results or um way how the work, uh, worker works. So in this, that is why we need integrity protection in addition to the data protection. Yeah, so, but, but the, the, the hash and the payload that uh, it, it's hashing over comes in the single request, right? So presumably right. if there's a many in the middle of the time, the hash can be recalculated. So I, I, I still don't see, unless the hash and the payload itself can come from different channels and through different requests, I can see the hash can be used for integrity checks. Otherwise, I'm still not clear what is the hash, um, what function is hash serving? So the hash here is the, um, not sure that I understand your question. So technically, request may be viewed as logically coming from multiple channels because right. the okay. sub yeah, data that's item. What I'm to get to. Okay. okay. When it's through multiple channels, then that's that's useful. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? So the future development, is there a question? Okay. So the uh, kind of like the um, listed the um, several areas that the we um, have to work on to make sure that the Avalon is truly useful and the enough have enough capabilities uh, to be used in the practical and the in the real world uh, situations. So one of them is very important is scalability in some core functionality. And I listed three of the most important areas that comes to my mind. So one of them is supporting the elastic worker pools and doing that in the way that is a transparent to the app developers. When I say transparent to the app developers, it means that it's um, from the uh, requester processing that is a single worker, but from the, um, CSP that has multiple workers, so the request can be forwarded to the uh, any of those uh, um, any of those enclaves for processing without overloading the particular nodes. The we definitely do not want to avoid creating our own orchestration engine, and we want to utilize the one of the common uh, um, orchestration engine, and the Kubernetes is the uh, choice for, for the number one choice now. 
And the, finally, the enclave, this is specific to Intel HGX. There is a new coming feature that would allow dynamic memory allocation. And that is the feature that we want to implement again. It's kind of linked to the scalability because you can execute the um, multiple workloads on the same physical node if you can allocate memory dynamically. Uh, the important part is obviously security because the uh, that is the key of the um, what we're focusing on and there are three areas here we need to uh, isolate work order execution from key management and manage, uh, mentioned that during the um, previous slides another one is the multi-tenant support we want to make sure that requests um workers uh, we can uh, create workers specific to the uh, particular requesters so the work orders only from these requester can be executing uh, on these wo uh, worker instances so that is the important request and the early um usages of the trusted computers actually proved that this is a valuable um feature that was requested by the customers and the uh, secure access to the external uh, data, sorry, not the date, uh, the data uh, the from uh, inside of the trusted worker. And we already partially working on that, but we still need to do more to do this better. <clears throat> Front end uh, uh, APIs and usages. So we're working currently on integrating two blockchains, and that is the uh, Ethereum, BESO, that is the iExec is actually doing the most of work here, and the Fabric, and the Fabric integration being done by IBM. And the um, we need to work on the privacy preserving state management, and there were already questions about that, and we definitely to do that and there is the uh, spec that is the <coughs> being developed as well and once this we finalize the um the for the um approach in the spec we can start working on the implementation and obviously we want to work on the different um vertical use cases you have them and the examples in the avalon so they would show uh, show how avalon can be used in the um like financial in this the supply chain, trusted tokens, that is the good areas for us to look at. Uh, backend integration, the different types of the <clears throat> workers. So we already have the minimally sized trusted compute. Um, uh, uh, the, the enclave is minimally sized trusted compute uh, base, but we will need to improve and enhance that and add additional capabilities to that. Important part is adding the, uh, I call this lib OS based development frameworks, but in reality, what we're talking here, the getting the frameworks that allow to use more traditional uh, approaches and the languages, because the um, current the, uh, minimally sized TCB requires you to build your custom workload as the library. This uh, second bullet uh, would allow to use more uh, generic, uh, more common so uh, software development and examples that we're already kind of looking into these by do trusted execution environment uh, is MESA. Jeez, sorry, I forget the use the proper term and then the graphene and we have a number of others that is actually coming uh, on the uh, already either exist on the market or just recently came to the market and uh, and also we obviously need to actively look for the uh, partners who would start to the um who would join the um our community and would actively work on the other hardware trusted execution environment and the different completely different trusted compute options like MPC or ZK. And in order for Avalon to be really uh, useful, we have to make, we constantly have to look at the option, how we can actually make, improve the application developer support. We at early stage, obviously, so we do not have too much documentation and tutorials, but we, this is important area for us to work on. We obviously need to expand the use cases uh, uh, portfolio. So people would know the kind of like find the starting point for the application development. 
And uh, currently we have a single repository that pretty much includes everything and the important part at some point uh, to um, split the core uh, Avalon from the SDKs repositories. And that would make the development much easier and would allow people who wants to contribute to core, contribute to the core. And those who cares about the application developers um, would make them kind of like isolated from the changes to the core. Any question? 